As we check out round one, heat number nine, it features a local favorite and hero for South Africa. The lone representation of South Africa on tour in the lineup with Jordy Smith, a two-time J-Bay Open champion, taking on Wiggly Dantes from Brazil and Adam Melling representing Australia, and he's here ready to compete. While we were away, Jordy Smith already got started, Pete. Well, look at the speed he carries down the line. He knows how to surf this wave so well. Two-time winner of J-Bay. His surfing suits this style of wave, lays the rail. You can see driving down the line, seeing exactly what needs to happen. Again, gets around the corner, carves a snap, finds a little tube time here, moves and shifts his body weight up above that front of the board, gets down the line. Again, can't get the exit, but quality surfing done there by Jordy Smith. Smith turns in a 6-6-7, also getting a wave during the break, Wiggly Dantes. So Wiggly on the backhand, and uh, he throws fire hose off the tail of his board. I don't know how he does it, but we try and analyze and figure it out. But ultimately, uh, that one shuts down on him. But a few big sets to start this heat out. Another solid wave, Adam Melling getting on the board. So Adam Melling, some of the uh, best results of his career came from uh, making a final here at J-Bay. So very similar to the waves he surfs at home. Very comfortable in these J-Bay conditions. Light seeing that solid set to kick off heat number nine quickly. Everybody getting on the board. Six six seven already in for Jordy. A three eight three in for Melling. Wiggly Dantes is about to get his first score in. More waves on the way here. Dantes up on wave number two. Late jam under the lip. Nice and vertical. There's the carve on the next opportunity. Plenty of speed and rhythm. Drawn out bottom turn. And a big wrapping cutback. Squares up vertically and belts it. Perfect timing and control and explodes again off the lip. Dantes, one more jam down there to close this one out. And he fires himself up for a solid score that'll be coming through. What a wave choice. That was exactly what the backhander needed. Impossible section. It takes off right at the main peak. But just look at how he didn't have to chase it. You know, the whole time he was able to just pace himself. The big round arcs. You know, this was the only moment that he really had to move down the line, and then it slowed up once again. You know, again, directing that board back towards the curl. And this thing slows up one more time, and then banks it hard off the top. That was excellent surfing there, and gets the finish. I would say we're going to see uh, a solid 8-plus ride here for uh, Wiggly Dantas. After doing some damage at the Fiji Pro, gave two surfers interference calls from Connor to Michelle on his way to making the final series. But now, this one all coming down to performance, a 9-2-7 to take the lead. Yeah, and uh, well-deserved. I mean, that was excellent surfing plus. You know, uh, I, get a, I give a little uh, squared over the top. I mean, that was that was solid. You know, and you watch, the, a lot of it came with the quality of the wave, too. You know, um, he did get that first solid move, and then right into a combination of major moves here, and then the, the middle section had to chase it down but the end is really where he laid it over. The big round arc, and then goes vertical, and then the final move here, and a nice steep section, hits it late, look at that, bang! That type of surfing right there is critical, degree of difficulty, and it still finishes even further. Beautiful surfing there by Wiggly Dantas. More waves on the way, priority with Jordy Smith. Needs a 6-6-1 here to take the lead. Jordy, a huge power carve off the top. Now there's speed snap down the line. Hard off the bottom. Big arcing cut back for Smith. Pulls in just real quick to keep that flow going down the line. Power jam off the top again. Squares up vertically. Closes this one out. Stays on his feet. And that'll be a fair gamble to take the lead, Pete. Yeah, I would say so. And uh, that was the type of surfing that we expect from Jordy. Sm so smooth in transition. You know, he's able to get so much speed off of a bottom turn. He doesn't have to double pump it to get extra speed. He just lays into it, and it drives off the bottom. So he's able to just kind of hit those transitions. Fun. Top rail to bottom rail, top rail to bottom rail. Uh, each time throwing spray off the, uh, the fire hose again. You know, both these surfers from the forehand, uh, as well as Wiggly on the backhand, throwing a ton of spray. Look at that first arc. Judges are going to love that, especially since he carried that speed through the second maneuver. 
Again, you don't see him pumping. He just lays over. You'll see adjustments through the top half of his body just to keep it flowing down the line. Again, a little mix up with a little barrel head dip. But just top to bottom the entire wave. Wasn't a huge set wave, but this definitely is going to add to that 6.67 that he has already. Uh, probably going to go into the excellent range. Jordy Smith comes into this event number 10 on the Jeep leaderboard. Big success point this year was making the final at Bells Beach. Every time we go to Bells, we're always saying Jordy's the guy to beat. Probably the best surfer at Bells without a bell yet in his career. There's a, a few world titles, 12 or 11, sorry, for one man, Kelly Slater, as we see up and riding. Wiggly Dantes moving quickly through a couple of backside snaps. There's a float, and he goes down hard right above the bricks. He's trying to better a four there. Jordy got the lead with that second wave of an 8.10. And now melling out the back, holding down priority. He was battling with Dane Reynolds to be the most exciting surfer on tour. And finally started getting that winning feeling at Jeffreys Bay. Back to this one, Dantes. Little down carve, backside float. Squares up nice and vertical. And He's got some speed to get down the line. He'll end up laying back with that one, running down without him. He was searching for a 5-5 to get a lead change there, Pete. He was battling with Dane Reynolds to be the most exciting surfer on tour and finally started getting that winning feeling at Jeffreys Bay. Back to this one, Dantes. Little down carve, backside float. Squares up nice and vertical. And He's got some speed to get down the line. He'll end up laying back with that one, running down without him. He was searching for a 5-5 to get a lead change there, Pete. Well, it'll be close. Um, you know, he needed to finish that one to really actually sell it in my book. But uh, some great surfing. Again, he did it on a, on a medium-sized set wave, kind of down the line. It did uh, offer some opportunity, but then at the very end, it kind of shut down quickly. More waves on the way. Jordy Smith now up, looking to better a 6.67. Already has a ton of speed. Keeping a high line approach. Beautiful front side power hook in the pocket for Jordy, right into the barrel, and he'll come out. Smith looking for more. Rock and roll float just to fit in another major move before that thing races down the point. Unpredictable with his turn choice, looking like he is fired up for his first heat here at the J-Bay Open this season. I'm loving the look of Jordy here. You know, I think he read that wave very beginning of it, knew he had to take that high line as long as he possibly could to set up that first move. You see a lot of surfers will do that. Sometimes they'll get a little anxious and they'll do those turns early. You see way high up on the wave, keeping his speed way up there, CC, and then that's when he sees it's gonna slow up right at that section there and just unloads. Beautiful car arc straight into the tube afterwards. So nice combination of major moves. And then here gets the swivel float where he actually kind of accentuates that floater and uh, nice finish move there. And I think that this is gonna add to his uh, point total. We watch this arc again. Look how he's got a ton of speed. This feels so good as he goes into this arc, puts the arms up there, wraps it around his body all the way in the top half of the wave and comes out with speed straight into the barrel. Jumps up on his board, quick little tube, nice combination of moves. And then there it gets into that crouch position as he pumps down the line for this big float move. Gets all compact, swivels up on the lip, and comes down clean. Love that approach from Jordy Smith. Already has an 8-1-0, expecting another big number for Smith. We'll keep him in that second position. So now he's up, still looking for the lead. Throws a carve in, and he ends up letting this wave run through the inside corner. Smith always gets the information from our beach announcers on the situation, so he knows he's still in second. Our heat leader up now. Carves right over the top of Jordy. Wiggly Dantes with a good section to deal with. Carves it back and ends up slipping off. So Dantes, his lead will remain the same. Jordy's still chasing a 7.01. But since then, he's, he's dealt with a lot of injuries that he's had to surf through because he's always trying to save his spot on tour. This is Smith now. 
driving through that first section with a big forehand carve. Blitzes it off the lip. Great momentum as he rips it again off the top. Another huge snap for Jordy. Down carve, and that'll set him up for the barrel one more time. Looking to make the exit and feels his way to the completion. Smith came close to getting a lead change on his last. Is he going to be closer on that one, Pete? Interesting because I think the surfing was there, but if you're going to look at a lot of the time, the judges will look at you know the quality of wave as well, and I think that he had to do some really dynamic surfing because that was a smaller set wave. You know that priority was with Adam Melling. Adam passed it up, but it was a great paced wave. Um, you know, it was a head high. It wasn't one of the bigger set waves, but his surfing was there. Maybe would have loved to see him, you know, finish a little stronger, but look at the beginning here as he loads up. Clean arc right to the bottom again, and that time explodes in the lip, sets up the next move again. Ton of speed as he's carried through these maneuvers. This way of giving him good pace and ability there, and then this part right there, you know, he did make the barrel, but it wasn't a clean exit. Sean said it was almost hard to get his attention because he had so much happening in his world so quickly. Back to this one with Melling now up after a long wait. Nice wrap to start off the top. Resetting his rail. Wanting to get barreled. He'll pull in. Keeps that high line. He'll punch out. Melling now reaching for a big finishing move. Little projection float. He's out of there. So Melling's hope was to break the combination after a long wait. Jordy Smith, local favorite in the lineup, current number 10 on the Jeep leaderboard, holds the lead over Wiggly Dantes and Adam Melling. So with some time remaining on the clock before we went to break. Melling got a wave. It came in at a 5.53. So the Australian still needs two new waves to make a comeback in this matchup. Seeing Jordy Smith go up and out. Dantes, the closest competitor for a lead change in this one, still just needs a 7.16 for the answer. This is the, what I like about Jordy. Look at this. He has given himself priority, and knowing that Melling, he's conceded Melling up the top of the point, but he's going to make sure that Wiggly isn't going to get an opportunity sitting a bit wide. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that I think the galley instills as well. I mean, obviously, Jordy has a ton of experience, and he probably know that on his own. But, you know, it's you got to compete, not just rely on talent, not just rely on, uh, you know, there, there's a part, portion of it, which is what Wiggly does, you know, and his success is being that he competes uh, at a high level, and he's going to do anything he can to win. Jordy's got to do that as well. You see the fans on the bricks. Those big rocks there are called bricks down here at Jeffreys Bay. Jordy will be using priority with 15 seconds. There's another wave behind this one for Wiggly Ooh. with 10 seconds to go. Jordy's wow. already down. Does Dantas have enough time to get to his feet? Five seconds to go. This one will count just in time, but he's a little bit deep on the takeoff. Still fighting for a 7.16. He's now earned some open face. Now starting to swing off the top. First turn, solid. Late hit on the end section. And he'll end up losing control on the finishing move. Jordy looking safe for the lead, but that one coming close with that last set coming in at the last second here. He was on the matrix there. <laughs> he definitely dodged a bullet as uh, that opportunity was given. I mean, it, it, that's the ha what happens at the end of a heat when you have a two wave set like that. I mean, Jordy had to make that choice. He can't just back off and all of a sudden he's going to get priority away anyway. Um, you know, ultimately at that point in time, you got to make that choice. Uh, you know, the first waves have been pretty much the quality waves. So um, good move there by Jordy and again, dodge a bullet. Jordy Smith, 810-833, throwing away a couple of sixes, had a nice rhythm in this 35 minute matchup. Dantes with a 927 looks like he'll be sent to round two, even though he had the high single number of the heat.